it's way more painful to get it and lose it mm -hmm. right. than it is to not get it mm -hmm. and want it. So a question that I get a lot, and I want to put it out to all of you, why do people stay in bad relationships? You know, it's my experience that people stay in bad relationships because they are in love or attracted to someone that feels familiar and their weaknesses fit perfectly with someone else's weaknesses. The person who is codependent or a caretaker, for example, feels so natural and, um, and it feels so familiar for them to be with someone who is a narcissist or a care needer. And it's that equilibrium of sorts that makes them feel comfortable, which paradoxically, it, for many, is dysfunctional. Yes, yes. And as I also say in my book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, we have a compulsion to stay with people who make us miserable because we don't want to give up. Because giving up feels like I have lost the hope of healing my wound. And I, I picked you because you remind me of my parent who drove me crazy and hurt me. So if I give up on you and I leave this to toxic, dysfunctional relationship, I feel defeated in my hope of ever healing. So I stay and I stay in the ring and I keep swinging. So it's a hopeful, you know, hope springs eternal. So it feels like uh, what you're both saying is kind of feels like a failure or no, it feels it's a, like it's you're a, stuck. No, it's the quest to heal. I, it, it's such a compulsion to heal. I can't give up on you because I know you're my hope if we can finally navigate our way through and they this are. hell hole. So it's a hope, a hope to heal and it's familiar. And, and for but me, it's, it's more of an equilibrium that people are drawn into unhealthy relationships because it fits, although uncomfortable. A balance yes. amongst, a, ba yeah. a dysfunctional Familiar balance. Pain. A dysfunctional balance. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, and I know what sense. Harville and I want to do with our lives for the, every remaining day. <laughs> really, we feel a vocation to try to get relationship education out into the public, the broader public. You know, years ago, the science was very murky. It is only recently the science has gotten so much better. So we are on a tear to try to like create a relationship revolution and let people know there is help for their relationships. You all have written great books. There's so many great books now out that can transform the conflict to connection. And I think what, what my contribution is, because um, I've lived that, you know, I've, I've had, I had a 20 year marriage, I had another subsequent five year relationship. And what I do with, with my life and with my clients is help people to understand that this is not unusual. <laughs> like I've lived it, this is normal. I write a weekly blog that talks about my journey. I'm very transparent about my life and my, my experience because I think that really normalizes things for people. Because I waited, I waited 20 years. I waited, you know, and I actually, in my last relationship, I didn't even wait. I kept trying to fix it, fix yeah. it, fix it, fix it. And every <laughs> marriage of our dreams becomes the marriage of the nightmare. Oh, like yes. it happens and that's, and it's supposed to happen and there's a way through. There are cultural constraints for many people to get out of a bad relationship. And there are always reasons for those constraints. And that is the culture and the society, the community has reasons for that, that, um, that make sense. But what they don't have and don't do is what Helen just said, tell people what their alternatives are. That is, you can change a bad marriage. You can also, you can also change persons, but if you do that without insight, you'll get another bad marriage. Uh, and then you'll think all oh, men are bad or all and women are bad. Insight piece or is marriage the key. is to blame. Or marriage right. is to blame. And I, I, I'd like to emphasize that, that that sense of familiarity is more comforting than the other thing. So to bring that into the therapeutic arena, I've often asked couples uh, something to deal with this phenomenon that we're all familiar with this when couples work and work and work and they get just about ready to transcend, they have the worst fight of their lives or they leave therapy. Having intimacy and being connected is so threatening because if I get it, I will lose it. Yes. It's way more painful to get it and lose it than it is to not get it and want it. And, and I would suggest and it's like, that's yes. 
that's that's just logical. I'll just die that's by not my even own neurotic. Sword. That's just logical, but it but it le keeps yeah. you miserable. I would suggest that it's really about the original trauma of being abandoned, or which could be the neglect or abuse that happened to a child that <laughs> plays out uh, in a relationship that keeps us afraid of taking that risk. It's a vulnerability that goes deeper than the here and now. Oh gosh. And it's the misery paradoxically presents us from experiencing a worse misery. Yes. So if you're in a bad relationship, if you're being abused emotionally or physically, get some help immediately. And there's a lot of resources out there. Get some help today.